Good day friends, my name is Ruta and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to more modded Skyrim to our playthrough of the Rigmore of Cyrodiil mod. Um, if you're new here, consider liking and subscribing. So she's sleeping and we're supposed to sleep as well, I believe. Use the bed and sleep until morning. During the... I mean, I did it. I don't know why it's not marked off. It Let's just sleep. 1 a.m. So maybe 8 hours, I guess. So unless it wakes me up at a certain hour, which might happen. Wouldn't be surprised, you know. What happened last night? My head. Oh, don't ask. I mean, I remember what happened, but you, my dear. I'd rather you not know what you tried making me do. Should I sit on the chair in front of her? Because I kind of feel awkward standing, you know? Um, so. Stuff happened. Let's just say it got pretty intense. The god. We didn't. Oh, I stopped your ass. No, no, we didn't. So let's just forget about it and focus, okay? Yeah, yeah. It was just a kiss, right? Oh, she remembers. <laughs> just a kiss. Can you wait downstairs while I change? I'm going to need to look the part. I just want to get this over with. Either way. Yeah, sure. Wait downstairs in the lobby. Let's close the door so that nobody walking past her. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way probably. Yes, I am. Okay. I guess I'm supposed to literally wait in front of the receptionist. <laughs> Wait for Rigmore. Okay, um, hello, miss. Do you want to talk? No? No? She doesn't. I hear footsteps, I think. Oh, she's coming in through the other side. Uh, I see you have the clothing that Jarls wear. So Skyrim has influenced you, I guess. Should I talk to her? Um... Countess of Bruma? My lord Dragonborn, would you kindly escort me to the ball? It would be my pleasure. Okay, let's go. I guess I'll try being nicer to her, but I don't really want to. Ah, I wish it would be sunny, actually, outside, you know? Because the Imperial City looks amazing, especially in sunlight. Where, where there's actually a sun, a visible sun, you know what I mean? Not just clouds. But still. I'm impressed with this mod so far. Like, truly I am. Halt. Access to the Emperor's Way is closed. State your identity and business here. Countess Rigmore of Bruma, and this is... No need, my lady. I knew it had to be you. Please enter. Everyone is assembled in the Imperial Chamber. I'll have the Lord Chancellor informed you all right. Thank you. Some of the voices are so silent. You know, compared to the others, which is... Not good when you think about it, because I have the voice audio basically maxed out, so it should be hearable, but um, I guess I'll try to make it louder when I edit the video, because like, I don't know, I don't know. Looks beautiful to be It's that creepy guy. No, Rigmore, protect me. <laughs> I don't want to talk to him. Well met, my fine dragonborn. I'm filled with such joy to see you once again. Wait, I'm taller than her. It's funny oh, that I'm hiding behind her. My you. cheeks are glowing. How are you on this fine day? Rigmore, please beat him up. Do something, protect me. <laughs> I need your protection now. Can I help you? <sighs> You're asking me if you can help me? You're the... Fine, thank you. Now be on your way, my good fellow. I could sing you a song, shine your shiny bits, anything for you. Just name it and I will do your bidding. 
You cannot imagine just how excited I am to just be in your presence. I am such a lucky, lucky boy. Don't call yourself a boy. The Countess and I have business to attend to, so if you'll excuse us... Of course. Countess Rigmore of Bruma. How rude of me. Please forgive me. Bailey, get back to your work. What, does he clean graves or...? Well, have a nice and happy day. Until next time. No, I don't want to see you next time. Just leave. Why did you not protect... <laughs> Maybe he's just... just a harmless guy, Dragonborn. Okay, he's a bit weird, you know? Come on. Who doesn't know about the Dragonborn, the hero of Whiterun? Still, he's creepy as hell. The attendant in the gardens here, but just stands there waving at us. <laughs> Even the guards, like, you know. Can we please continue? No, he's not waving at us. He's waving at you, Dragonborn. <laughs> Very funny. Shoot, scram. Yeah, thank you, guard. <laughs> Come on, let's get this over with. Please lead the way. That fan is creepy as hell. Oh, these guards look mean as hell. Um, should I stand behind you, cheese? Well, it's been a while since I've been in here, so... Oh. Ooh. A lot of um, flags or banners, I guess. Like a lot of them are in here. Don't say a word. I'll try. Rigmort, you're here at last. Words are not enough to describe how beautiful and radiant you look. Oh, I'll stay silent. But my foot Guardian General, mouth thank you for escorting my fiance here safely. You have my sincere gratitude. Oh, she's your fiance now, is she? Rigmore, if you please. I'll just be giving him the stank eye. What, should I follow her still? It doesn't tell me what I should do, so... <sighs> Which one of them is Finally, your father? The mystery behind my errant son's disappearance is revealed. Countess Rigmore of Bruma. The bear has told us all about you, my lady. Good things, I hope, Count Leowen. Why? Are there some bad things? <laughs> oh, I don't like him. If there were a count, one would expect only the most dignified behavior of a knight and gentleman. <laughs> the countess has you over a barrel there already, Bobby. Hang on tight, boy. It's going to be a rough ride. No offense, Rigmore. As you can see, these balls, as they call them, aren't really the sort of balls I understand them to be. Father, mind your manners. Ladies are present. I'm sorry, Count. I don't understand. Exactly which balls do you have in mind? Really? Uh, uh, well... <sighs> Who's over the battle now, Leowen? Oh, uh, well... Uh, Tell us, Countess. Uh, what finally uh, brings you out of the <coughs> Mm. Yes, Countess. We have so much to catch up on. How's Guardian, your mother? Might I have a word in private? It concerns Rigmore. I feel like she should have heard that, so um, she might not be happy because she does not like when people talk behind her back about her, so... Well, what sock would you want from me? God, you're ugly. I can't look at him, to be honest. So, Robert, what's on your mind? It was something that was said over dinner last night. We've all been here for a few days and heard Rigmore had arrived yesterday. Uh-huh, and? Unfortunately, she didn't attend last night and the Counts were becoming agitated. They just want her to sign the decree so they can all go home. Go on. Some of the Counts do not recognize Rigmore as nobility. They say she is a commoner. I, of course, defended her honor robustly. I doubt it. 
When Count Coral suggested Bruma wasn't doing enough to stop bandits sneaking through the Jarrell Mountains to raid the northern counties, my father countered the complaint that as soon as Bruma signs the decree, it'll be signing away its status protected under international law as a free city. Please continue. Once Ariel Sethius gets Rigmore's signature on the decree, it will legitimize his claim to the Mede dynasty and everything therein. Once he proclaims himself Titus Mede III, he will own Bruma and will no longer be a free city. And my father told them the Emperor has plans for Bruma, and they should no longer be concerned. What sort of plans? That, I'm afraid, I don't know. Sir Obear, why are you telling me all this? Because, Guardian, I love Rigmore with all my heart. And if anything were to befall her, I would never forgive myself. She has changed my life completely, and I intend to marry her. So I have a plan to protect her honor until that time comes, decree or no decree. What are you suggesting? As you know, my father is the Count of Leowin. He commands the largest force, but is loyal only to Sethius, as am I. If the Emperor does indeed have any plans for Bruma that could affect the House of Rigmore, if I were to publicly propose and, and she were to accept my hand in marriage, we could rule the county together as Count and Countess of Bruma. Any plans the Emperor had, he would seriously have to reconsider or come to naught. Mm -hmm. You're playing a very dangerous game, Sir Robert. Is Rigmore not worth it? Well, I don't know. Guardian, you know her as well as I. Our engagement has been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. Look at these stuck-up so-called nobles fawning over her as we speak with sweet-sounding words. Don't think for one moment I am ignorant to the fact that they feel the same way about Father and I. In their eyes, we too are also commoners, bandits, scum from the highlands. Rigmore and I were meant to be together. It's our destiny, our fate. And no noble, or even emperor, is going to get between us. Oh, really? Why do I have a sudden feeling that he might get killed? No? Well, I guess I'll find out. What do you want me to do? When you have a private moment, tell Rigmore of my plans. That my love is true. Because when she signs that document, her life may be in danger. And I intend to be the knight in shining armor that saves the day and our future together. It would be for the best interests of all present that she accept. I don't want to surprise or embarrass her, or take any chances. I feel like he has something else in mind. Planned. I'll speak to her. Of that you can be assured. Thank you, Guardian. You won't regret this. I never forget who my friends are. Mm -hmm. Still don't trust you. Return to the party. Okay. Ah! Bobby! Come and join us! So, when are you going to pop the question to this beautiful damsel? Count Leowin, please leave the poor Countess alone. Note how she blushes. Sir Robert and the Countess would make such an excellent match, don't you think? All in good time, Lady Coral. Um... So are we going to just be all silent and whatever? <laughs> Why are y'all looking at me? You wanna talk about something? We need to talk. Guardian, we are dining. Right now. Okay. Please excuse me for one moment. Inform Rigmore Bobby's prime is probably the same place where we stood with him, right? Oop! She's fast. Um, is over here okay? I'm assuming? Yes? I've just had an interesting conversation with your Bobby. Dragonborn? What? He informed me that once you sign the decree, Bruma will no longer be a free city. Yes, it's the decision we made. We all agreed on it. The Emperor will rule supreme. He also fears for your safety and that once you do, the Emperor has plans for Bruma. What plans? He claims he doesn't know. 
I just want to sign the damn thing and go home, nothing more. Bobby wants me to tell you his plan, so get ready. Go on. When you sign the decree, he is going to ask you for your hand in marriage. Oh, the gods, the idiot, what is he thinking? He says he loves you and wants to be your knight in shining armor. Tell me you're kidding, right? Should I still go the lover way? Sure. Rugmar, this could be our way out. No. I don't love Bobby. I love you. Oh, finally you admit it. If you accept any plans Cepheus might have for Bruma, or if he knows about your secret, are over. Of course. But what about us? Rugmar, listen to reason. If you say no, you could be risking everything. Are you dumping me? <laughs> I mean, we're not together, kind of. Uh, this woman, Rigmore, all I am saying is it's a golden opportunity, a gift horse. Hear me out. You know, I thought better of you. I thought we had something. All that back there, was that a lie? No, it wasn't a lie. I love you more than anything in this world. I, I suppose don't. next you're going to tell me you're only doing it for me, out of love? That you only want to see me happy? And that sometimes, if we love someone, we have to let them go, right? I mean, it's kind of true, but work more ways to listen. I would rather die in your arms than lose you again. But now I see the real you. Now I see through all the lies and that you've been leading me on all this time. I'm here for you. <laughs> Whatever. You're very loud. Like, I feel like everybody can hear her. Wait, hear me out. You know what you are, Dragonborn? You are pathetic. Hold on. Okay! I'll accept Bobby's hand in marriage, because he's a real gentleman. At least he isn't going to mess with my head and dump me at the drop of a hat. Hopefully. But by the time I get home, I want you gone. Do you understand? And I never, ever want to see your face again. Oh. Quickly straighten your mouth. Up, up, up. Wait. Now. <laughs> okay, I need to. No, just you wait one fucking minute. <laughs> How dare you laugh. speak to me like that? This conversation is done. One more step, and I swear by the gods, I'll draw my sword and everything will be done. Don't you threaten me. I'm not having you flip me off and talk down to me like a common peasant. All that back in the woods, the hotel, does that not account for anything? Dragonborn, stop. Literally, at that moment, it said Serana is tired of waiting. <laughs> My god, I forgot about her. Anyway, no, I won't. I don't have to prove to you how much I love you. You should know that. Have you forgotten? I still don't care. Forgotten what? I would have taken your place on the altar of Trinimac just so that you might live. Oh, Dragonborn... I'm sorry. Yo, are you? Come on, hold it together. I love you so much, Dragonborn. Uh, don't you start with me. And I would rather die in your arms than lose you again too, but you must hear me out. <sighs> okay. Oh, don't start crying, jeez. Listen carefully. We go along with it. You sign the document and get engaged to Bobby. Go on. We stay for the coronation, go back to Bruma, then you break it off with him, send him a letter or something. You mean dump him by courier? I mean, why not? He's not worth it. <laughs> yes, if you like, tell him it isn't him, it's you. We'll leave some time for it to settle and confess our love. Oh, my sweet, the silly dragonborn. I know what you're trying to say, but I don't know. Bobby doesn't deserve that. It feels like a telenovela to me right now. What? I would rather tell him the truth, right now, to his face, than continue this... this charade. You can't, you'll die. You can't be serious. Uh-huh. If he proposes, I will refuse. I would rather be exiled and risk my life, just to have you come get me. You have got to be kidding me. If I don't make it, then at least... At least I died loving you. I give up. I really do. I have finally come to the end of a very long piece of rope. You're not mad at me, are you? No, Rigmore, I'm not mad at you. Are we still good? 
hell no we're not yes we're still good come on they'll wonder what's keeping us okay no doubt this will be a shit show i'm sorry but i so tell us lady Rigmore, why has bruma had such a change of heart considering the circumstances surely bruma is better off remaining a free city Bruma has decided to sign the Noble Decree and join the six counties of Cyrodiil, making a seventh. Therefore, returning to the fold, exemplifying the county of Bruma's loyalty to the Empire so as to legitimize the title of our beloved Emperor, Titus Mead III. Talking of which, Lord Chancellor, I had hoped to make haste as to signing the document. Bruma wishes only the best for our county and the continuity of the Empire, and of course, the coronation of our Emperor. Unfortunately, the Emperor is unavailable to join us at present and wishes me to convey his sincere apologies. Because he's a vampire. Please help yourselves right? to the refreshments provided, then return to your guest rooms here at the palace until the reschedule has been confirmed. Oh, something will this happen. This should take place tomorrow. The Emperor thanks you all for your patience, continued support, and understanding. If my Lady Rigmore would be so kind as to follow me, as so only to be acquainted with her designated quarters. Well, I'm following you, Rigmore. Please go Ooh. ahead. Do not stand like a maniac here. Oh, how I hate following NPCs. <laughs> I would say y'all have no idea, but you all have an idea, because I always say it. So, um, yes. Oh, it's so bright in here. So, no talking, y'all. Both of you are so silent, like. Nothing. Blackwell ain't gonna say anything, no? That man is a rat. I have never talked to him, not once, yet I dislike him so much. Like, I just feel like he will betray everybody, even the Emperor if he needs to, you know? Why is her room so far away from- Something will happen, won't it? My lady, as I have conveyed to our other noble guests, the Emperor wishes you all to remain here at the palace until the signing of the decree and the subsequent coronation have taken place. Then you will be free to return to Bruma as you see fit, an adjacent room for your- companion is provided in suite as stated in the agreement i do apologize for any inconvenience caused and hope your stay here will be a pleasant one as best it can be i would also like to take the opportunity to thank you for finally attending and would like you to convey my respects to lady sigun upon your return please feel free to return to our guests thank you lord chancellor you have been so kind be assured, your respects will be conveyed as you wish. Ugh, now I remember why I liked living at the Roxy Inn so much. I mean, this isn't too bad. Talk to Rick more. Well, let's talk to her. I'm gonna just sit near you. When you said about that stiff-ass court crap thing, you weren't kidding, were you? <laughs> I know, right? It can't be much fun for Blackwell having an icicle permanently stuck up his ass. That was pretty impressive, though, the way you held your own. Where did you learn all that? Free of thought. Although some of it I picked up from Malsam's constant bitching and whining. <laughs> Shall we go back to the party? Are you kidding? I'm gonna rest here for a while. All that back there has drained me. Ugh! Then I'll watch over you a while. Good night, Dragonborn. I wish I could explore the city, though. 
Go to bed when you're ready. I mean, no time like the present, although what can I steal? A lot of capes. And nothing good, probably. Wine? I'll do blank wine. Uh, I'll just sleep. Oh. Oh, so I could have sat near her, I'm assuming. Probably, right? Or no, she probably sat over there. Interesting, how. Oh. Anyway, I'll just... 5 p.m. 12 would be 5 a.m. 6, 7? So maybe, I don't know. We'll sleep till it's morning, I guess. Um. What in God? What? Dragonborn, wake up. It's time to go. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a jump scare? Because it kind of did it to me. Like, you all saw that, right? I wasn't going insane. I'm not going insane, right? I'm not crazy. Or anything. Um. Rigmore. I think I'm seeing demons in my sleep. Um. Hmm. <laughs> What time is it? Time to sign the decree. They're waiting for us in the Imperial Chamber. Are you okay? Uh-huh. How are you feeling? To be honest, I feel relieved. But a little nervous, I guess. Have you experienced anything strange happen since you've been here? Uh-uh. Dragonborn, what's wrong? I just saw a face, so there's something here. Dragonborn... It's probably nothing. Forget I even mentioned it. Okay. She won't forget it. Have you thought about Bobby? What we talked about? I was thinking of what you said, and I have decided to accept if he proposes. But what will we do? What's to stop them from coming after us when I dump Bobby? We'll be back to square one. I intend to strengthen the garrison, enforce the borders, talk to Quintus, try to gain his support... But it's only speculation, Dragonborn. Quintus has sworn fealty to the Emperor, and he's in Hammerfell. We have friends in Skyrim, Ingol, Cassius. That's gotta be worth another 100 men combined, at least. But they have the new Imperial Army. That's six legions, Dragonborn. Even if you did convince Quintus, that's five to one odds. How can we hold out against a siege? Even if Ingol and Cassius could muster a hundred men, there's no way out. She is right. I, I don't want to be mad at her, I guess. Rigmore, Bruma is perfectly situated. We have the heights, we could hold them off indefinitely. <sighs> Let's cross that bridge when we come to it. I guess I agree with her. For once in my life. Come on, let's get this over with. After you, Dragonborn. Scorch Rigmore to Imperial Chain. We shall do that. You following me? Okay. It was somewhere over here? Over here. <laughs> These halls. And then this way, I believe. Still following me? Great. Oh my god. Uh -oh. Come on. I'm supposed to... Is that the Emperor? Oh. The soon-to-be Emperor? His wife definitely looks like a vampire. I can't really see her, you know, from this far away, but... That is a vampire if I've ever seen one. Um, am I... Two years ago, we rode into the city at the head of an army. But this army was not one of occupation. This army was not one of subjugation. No, this was an army of liberation. Liberation of an empire left buckling under the weight of poverty and recession. An empire ravished by pirates and bandits from the lawless border regions. An empire threatened by a dominion with its sights set on reclaiming this land for the elven nations. An empire left decadent 
and abandoned by its predecessor. In this very room, upon this very floor, lay the crowns of this once great seat of civilization. <coughs> and by legal right of combat, it was the people of this great city that placed them upon our heads. <coughs> and we flourished. We became great again. We prospered and thrived. The old was replaced with the new. A new dawn, a new era, and with it, the creation of a new imperial army to protect and serve the six counties of Cyrodiil and the imperial territories. <sighs> Provinces and colonies once weak Annexed and lost were once again reclaimed, and the world trembled and knew its place. She sounds mad. History is to be made this day, this very moment, as the county of Bruma returns to the fold. <coughs> and we shall stand united as we become once again the seven counties of Cyrodiil to show the world our strength, our unity, and our fortitude in our wholeness. And they shall come to know of our intention to strengthen our resolve. And they shall come to know of our intention to be a global force to be reckoned with. And they shall come to know of our intention to expand our empire as is our divine right. United under the name of the most powerful dynasty in all of Tamriel. Yeah! Oh. She is definitely a vampire or some kind of being. And she's like so angry and like aggressive, my god. Countess Rigmore of Bruma, you have graced us with your presence oh. here today to sign the noble decree. And with it, you will inherit what was set out in the White Gold Agreement, including full access to trade, a personal Imperial Legion loyal only to you, and a place at the seat of representatives here in the Imperial Chamber. By signing the decree, you forfeit your status of a free city, and by doing so, revoke the corrupt, weak, and unelected international laws, and legitimize your Emperor's claim to the titles of the Mede Dynasty. Do you wish to say anything before you sign? Only that I would like to thank the Emperor for this opportunity, and thank all the noble houses for their openness and kindness since I arrived, and that you all can be assured of the House of Bruma's loyalty and support. Lord Chancellor, please proceed. <sighs> Approach the table and sign, my lady. The houses of Cyrodiil are united. Long live the Emperor. Oh, he's going to propose? Whoop! Now this will be interesting. Bobby, don't do it. Could I please have everyone's um, attention? I have an important announcement to make. As many of you might know, Countess Rigmore and I have been acquainted this past year. And I cannot think of any better occasion to tell her of my undying love for her, and to humbly ask her something that's been a long time overdue. Rigmore, it would be my greatest honor if you would become my wife. Oh, the gods, Bobby! Will you marry me? Yes! Yes, of course! Oh, she's going. Okay. Good, good. Act, lie, do whatever. Why are you looking at me? Oh god, the vampire ladies. Oh, they both look kind bravo, of like. Bravo, bravo. And might I say, very impressive. Are you seeing it to me? Talk to Blackwell. I'm sorry I don't follow you. Oh, I think you do. Morag Sethia sucker punched by a master stroke of genius, guardian and protector of Countess Rigmore of Bruma. Indeed, a title you should be very proud of. 
Oh, I am Lord Chancellor, be assured of that. Meet me in the temple gardens tomorrow morning before the coronation. There are some things I would like to discuss. She can literally hear... She probably won't be... Mm. Congratulate the happy couple. Huh. Which one? Well, wet sock. Congratulations, Sir Robert. Thank you, Guardian. If you have a moment... Yes, I do. You can come with us and listen. I mean, I don't care. No, she's not gonna do that. Again, into the dark corner. Well... What do you want now? Sir Robert? I found out what's been going on. Last night I discovered a ventilation shaft behind the wall. The shafts are connected. Every room has them. And each one has an access panel behind the banners. When father was asleep, I inched my way in and managed to maneuver myself within earshot of Coral's room. Marag Sethius was there, discussing the fate of Bruma. We probably shouldn't be talking about this, where there's a ton of Imperial Guards literally behind us, like, you know, half a meter or a few feet, I don't know, you know, but, um, couldn't we please find a safer place, no? Go on, Sir Aubert. For whatever reason, she wants to even the balance of power. My father commands the largest army in Cyrodiil and has Anvil in his pocket. Anvil has access to Quintus Vitalis and his army. You know of him? Yes, we fought the New Order together at the Battle of Whiterun. Well, the plan was to set Rigmore up for a fall after she signed the decree. Mercenaries were to be paid to raid the counties of Coral and Shadenhall, and the blame was to be put on Bruma for not taking prompt and appropriate action to stop it. Mm-hmm. Then what? They were then to call a meeting at the seat of representatives in the Imperial Chamber, and call for a vote of no confidence in the House of Bruma, which would then be dissolved. This is a dirty, underhanded business. Coral and Shadenhall were to march into Bruma County, take control, and divide it up between them. Shadenhall was to get the iron ore deposits and the mines. Coral was to get control of the city, and with it the title of Duke of the Counties of Coral and Bruma. He would demand a thousand men, and together they would reset the balance of power in Cyrodiil. Rigmore's family are considered commoners. With Morag's persuasion, the Emperor would turn a blind eye just to appease the nobility. Mm -hmm. So that's why they all stormed out with a slapped face? Exactly. But I don't think the Emperor knows about the plot. Once the coronation is over, I intend to inform my father of Morag Cepheus and her possible motives. He'll know what to do. What can you tell me of Morag Cepheus? She's always been there. Many years ago, we were based in the Colovian Highlands. My father was the local bandit chieftain, and Sethius arrived with two hundred men. They had parley, and we were to join them. Morag was already with Sethius. He never went anywhere without her. Mm -hmm. Over the coming years, Sethius banded together all the bandit chiefs in the border regions. We became unstoppable. Even before Titus Mede II mysteriously disappeared. On very rare occasions, Morag would disappear. No one knew where, but she always came back looking younger than she left. Something she has maintained to do to this day, leading to rumors. But Sethius didn't want to usurp the Imperial throne. Neither did my father, but Morag Sethius insisted. It seems Morag's the real power behind the throne. She has some sort of power over him, Guardian. You would think with what she has already, she'd be happy with that. But she seems to thrive on causing dissent, scheming, or sowing seeds of discord. What have I gone and got myself into here? Anyway, none of that matters now. Bruma will have the support of not only the House of Leowin, but Anvil, Skingrod, and Breville. Plus Quintus' Western Army. So my work is done here, and I have you to thank for it. But I would love to be a fly on the wall later, if you catch my drift. Mm -hmm. But beware of Blackwell. He's taken a keen interest in you since you arrived. Thank you, Sir Robert. Please, call me Bobby. I bid you good night.
Take good care of Rigmore for me. After the coronation tomorrow, we can plan our wedding and set things in motion. I mean, we don't know if that will happen. Okay, what am I supposed to do now? Tell Rigmore it's time to retire. Okay, dear. Um. My lady Rugmore, may I remind you of the long day tomorrow and that we should retire? Of course, Guardian. Thank you all for your support, and I bid you all good night. I'm the one leading the way, which is awesome. I won't close the door because I don't care about them. We're supposed to go to the. Uh, somewhere here, right? Um, where did they give us the rooms? I swear I will be lost in a second. He's still following me. And over here, I believe. Yeah, great. I don't know if I should keep the light on or not, because it's too bright almost, you know? Oh, I think I bumped something. Well... Hey, you did good back there. Are you okay? I feel sick to my stomach, if you must know. We must keep our voices down. The walls have ears, literally. What did Bobby want? He claims Coral and Chadenhall, with Morak's help, want to carve up Buma between them. But why? To balance the power amongst the nobles. It actually makes a lot of sense. Is that what all this is about? This is the reason why we're here? And not what we thought? I don't know. It's all too convenient. It's like we're being played. Well, it seemed pretty real to me. The rags storming off, and I noticed Coral and Shadenhall left pretty quickly, too. We're in the heart of the Imperial Palace, Dragonborn. These people don't do play acting to such a huge scale. Mm. There's got to be something in what Bobby said. It's like they pick up on things, anything, and use it to mess with your head. I can't sit next to her. Only on the chair. I do believe Bobby's plan has upset the apple cart, but it's what Blackwell said that doesn't add up. What did he say? He attributed the intrigue to me. I can't help but wonder why. Unless he knows, right? He knows about me. And they were going to make a move after the signing. So maybe he's assumed you put Bobby up to the proposal. There's no love lost for the Lord Chancellor, Dragonborn. He might not even know about the plot between Morag, Coral, and Shadenall. Hmm, oh, he knows. He knows everything, probably. If at all there is one, and if there were, why did it come about? Let's think of some scenarios. If what Bobby says is true, why would Morag want to balance the power? The only thing I can think of is that she might fear Leowin. After all, he has the strongest force, right? Clever girl. What? I didn't do anything. By marrying you, Bobby becomes the Count of Bruma. Leowin would hold all the cards in the deck. Of course. He has the support of Anvil, Breville, Skingrad, and Quintus' army in the west. By the gods, Bobby doesn't want me. He wants Bruma. If I marry him, he becomes Count by default. I was right. God damn it, I was. See, I had the feeling he would... Keep going. You're nearly there. What? Uh, okay. So, Morag stormed out, not because of any plot she had with Coral and Shadenhall was subverted, but because the balance of power has just become weighed in favor of... the Count of Leowin. And he wants the Imperial Crown for himself? It would make sense of what Blackwell said if he assumed we were in on Leowin's scheme. You know what? All this bullshit makes me want to go knocking on the Emperor's door and saying to him, Hey, asshole, I've got a real royal bloodline that goes back to the first Mead dynasty. Don't yell so those words out loud, please. Please don't yell. Somebody might be listening in, you know? Even Bobby in the freaking ventilation shaft or whatever. <laughs> you know what, Rukmore? I couldn't agree more. Get this whole ball rolling. You know, it's like a kind of violence. What they say and do. How they can instill fear into someone with just words. It makes you feel sick to the stomach with 
fear and worry. So now we are a part of the game. Who do you believe? Who do you trust? Like rats caught in a trap. There could be a way to find out. Notice the banner? What about it? The breeze is caused by a ventilation shaft. All the rooms are connected. Bobby told me. You're not seriously thinking about crawling around in that thing eavesdropping, are you? I mean, why not? Why not? Right now we have nothing to lose. It could prove Bobby was telling the truth all along. What about me? Rugmore, you'll be okay, trust me. Stuff some pillows under my sheets and if anyone comes, you can tell them I'm sleeping. Dragonborn! <laughs> I won't be long. Why don't you get changed into something more ladylike? Hey, I would love that. Nope. Oh, sudden change of... So would I. Oh, and if you see a head pop into the room and it isn't mine, hit it with a heavy blunt object. Oh, har har. You really are something. You know that? I swear to God, somebody will be listening here, right? I will climb in there and then she will be kidnapped or something. Where is it? Ah. Interesting. I mean, hopefully it won't come... That is a huge shaft. I imagine there's something else. I'm very loud. Whatever. She's just talking You're to herself. You're going to have to tread carefully. Who knows? With the Leowin boy marrying that common strumpet, the real nobility in this land could be squeezed out completely. I don't trust any of them. Least of all, Morag Cephalus. We shall have to wait and see, my dear. After all, now that the Count of Anvil's daughter has agreed to marry our son, Leowin's influence will diminish and ours will grow. Also, with Anvil's family ties to Skingrad, the West will become much more secure. Quintus's army sits on the border of Hammerfell as we speak, and comes under Anvil's jurisdiction. What of Chadenhall and all this? The Count of Chadenhall doesn't like what's happening one little bit. He cannot imagine why Gruma would relent and sign the decree unless there's something more sinister going on. It's madness to sign. Gruma was perfectly within its right to remain a free city under international law. Why would the Countess change her mind now? All she had to do is buff Cepheus off. I would have sent Blackwell packing with an arrow up his ass and reached out to us in Chadenhall. She could have reached out to all the provinces. Cepheus would not have dared touch her. It does make you wonder the reasons behind Leowin Boy's interest in her, though. To think we almost had it in the bag. Eavesdrop on Leowin's room, okay. I feel like they should hear me clunking around with my heavy ass armor. <laughs> no. no. Well, 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 my boy. I would have never thought you would have made such a proposal in front of everyone. Father, when are you going to come to terms with the fact that I love Rigmore? Why is it such an issue? I had hoped you would marry into nobility. And I don't want to disrespect your Rigmore. She's a great girl. But she's hard work, Bobby. You even said it yourself. She has constant mood swings. She's argumentative. She has baggage. Look, she's not even a native of Cyrodiil. That's where you're wrong, and I won't hear of it. She was born in Cyrodiil to respected parents. <laughs> You're just a young fool, blinded by love. She's a Nordling, a barbarian. Just because a dog is born in a stable, it doesn't make it a horse. And your drink more is no thoroughbred. By marrying into imperial nobility, that would make something of you one day, my boy. It would command respect, give you an army to conquer new regions, territories, even provinces. Instead of counting icicles on that mountain with her guardian breathing down your neck, the county is worthless and full of nords. Love doesn't create empires, boy. Those are made by blood, blood and guts on your sword. Oh God. Even though your intentions are sincere with Rigmore, and marrying this girl will indeed help our cause. To strengthen our position here in the province, slightly, you still have a lot to learn. 
Lady Rigmore is going to be my wife, and I will hear no more of it. Well, we don't know if she'll be your wife. Uh, real sweet, real sweet, okay. I guess Bobby isn't as evil as I thought. For now, I still don't trust him. I don't know ah, what he will Blacker. have to do to me. My lord, you summoned me. You had better have something good for me, Blackwell. Who is she? What is she doing here? More to the point, how did she manage to surface out of thin air and become such a problem? Is my lady present? I'm sure she would like to hear. She... she will be back shortly. She needed to visit her... her father. Mm -hmm. Please continue. Little is known from the time she met the Countess. Apart from the New Order incursion into Skyrim, very little is noted or recorded in manuscript. What we do know is she was hired to protect her from the New Order, a breakaway sect native to Alador that tried to overthrow the Isle and invade Cyrodiil. What did the New Order want with her? The girl disappeared for years until she resurfaced at the Battle of Whiterun. She was linked to a Khajiit emissary who frequented the Imperial Court and had the ear of the Council of Elders. It was all kept very quiet, a matter for the Council and Heads of State. I was not privy to these proceedings, and instead I was asked to take care of the affairs of the province, a job I continued to do after the disappearance of the Emperor until... Please go on, Lord Chancellor. After the New Order were crushed, the Thalmor made good their time in Cyrodiil, erasing all evidence. After the events, Titus Mead II bestowed upon the girl the noble title of Bruma County. As for her and her guardian, the two parted ways, and shortly after, the Emperor disappeared. That's all we know. After the Thalmor were expelled when the nobility signed the recent White Gold Agreement, my attempts to recover any information led nowhere. The trail went cold. I don't like it, Blackwell. She was only meant to sign the document. Do you think she is complicit in a possible plot with Leowin? The balance of power here in Cyrodiil is constantly changing. At first it was prudent to have friends loyal to you, such as Leowin, to hold the upper hand among the counties. Your position relies on fealty, and although there is no evidence of subterfuge, there is a rivalry between them, and it has now become so very obvious. The announcement of the marriage between Bruma and Leowen has only added to the suspicions of their rivals. I can understand that, but the Countess of Bruma... Why would an emperor bestow such a noble title on a wretched Nord girl? Why would he do that? What is so special about her? What in God's name? That jump scare, God damn it! I'll tell you why she is so special. So special to have at her side the most dangerous killer in all of Tamriel. Of course, it is now all so obvious. It all fits in. The ripples in the fabric of the void. How she hid her truths. She has been hiding it for years. Afraid for her very life. Cursed by her blood from the day she was born. A product of a liaison that produced a royal bastard. Her veins coursing with the royal blood of the dynasty we usurped. And her guardian, a half-beast dragon slayer, champion of Boethia and defeater of Alduin. <laughs> she is a pretender by default. And I want her. And I want them both, Lord Chancellor. We would need evidence before we could touch her. A confession, or someone to testify. <laughs> I'll make the girl confess, even if I have to do it myself. And as for her guardian... <laughs> Aren't you meant to be protecting your beloved Rigmore, Dragonborn? I thought something would happen. <laughs> Can I go? Will she say anything else? No, I'll just run. Rigmore! I was right. I was so right. I shouldn't have left her alone. God freaking damn! Where is the freaking exit? How did I fit through that with my armor? I implore you, good sir, to hold your weapons, or the Lady Rigmore will be summarily executed. The Countess of Bruma is charged with treason, 
and will stand trial at the nearest opportunity. She will be taken to the Imperial City Prison to await the arrival of her tawny. No harm will befall her. As long as you comply with the law, you are to remain here under house arrest for the time being until further notice. It's okay, Dragonborn. I'm kind of glad it ends this way. I feel kind of relieved, in a way. Have Malisam take care of my things for me. And whatever happens at the trial, don't screw it up, okay? I might not get another chance to speak to you in person again, even during the trial. And I know we talked about all this before, but if I don't make it, please don't blame yourself. I just want you to know that you're the best thing that ever happened in my life and that I love you with all my heart. Goodbye, Dragonborn. Will I get to break into the prison and save her or whatever? I feel like I might have to do that and I kind of want to do it. Because the past three or four episodes, I don't even know, have been just me talking to her and it's kind of getting old in a way. It's interesting, but... So do I talk to you? I can't get off of the bed. I'm just crushing it with my armor. Come closer to me, please. If you want to say something. Well? You made a very serious misjudgment coming here. I know it's no consolation, but no one knew about her ties to the Mead dynasty. It was a complete surprise. Suffice to say, she kept her secret well. Please, sit. Oh no, I can sit, huh? Where am I supposed to sit? On this bed? No? Um... Well? You gonna say anything? Should I sit here? <laughs> um, you're awfully close to me. Where am I supposed to sit? Can't I escape? Oh, it's gone. Well, I guess I'll end the episode here then, and I will try to figure out what the hell is happening in the next one, right? So I do hope you enjoyed it. Um, Brickamore has been captured. We will probably rescue her in the next episode. Again, if you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe. And consider following me on my social media somewhere on the screen. I would appreciate it a lot. And I shall see you all in the next episode. I hope you have a very great day.